the holy name of Jesus, amen. amen. Death may be the final word for you and me in this life, but death was not the final word of Jesus at the end of his earthly life. Our Lord's resurrection on Easter, as well as his 40-day speaking tour, during which time he continued to teach about the coming of the kingdom of God until his ascension back into heaven, affirmed that his love and his presence endured well beyond the cross and the grave. The sending of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost also affirms that the love and presence of Jesus also endure beyond the visible physical presence that his disciples had enjoyed. And of course, this is what we heard Jesus promised to his disciples in the gospel today. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And on the day of Pentecost, 10 days after our Lord's ascension, Jesus sent the Spirit in an incredible and unexpected way. Yes, the Spirit came in such a way that it was unmistakable. The apostles weren't left wondering, looking at each other, shrugging their shoulders and asking, well, is this what we were waiting for or not? Yes, the Spirit's coming on Pentecost was undeniable with the sound like a mighty rushing wind filling the entire house where the disciples were sitting and divided tongues of fire appearing to them and resting upon each one of them. And the miraculous and sudden ability for them to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Because one thing for us to take note of here is that when God promises his people something, when he delivers and makes good on that promise, there is no uncertainty to be had. When Jesus charged his disciples to go make disciples of all nations through baptism and teaching, he promised them, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So there is no doubt or uncertainty of Christ's real presence in the baptisms that take place here at Ascension of Christ, and in the Holy Supper that is celebrated here strictly according to our Lord's institution, nor in the forgiveness of your sins when Jesus speaks his words of absolution through the mouth of his earthly servant. As a brief aside, this is why grape juice and wheat thins cannot under any circumstance be used as elements for Holy Communion nor baptizing with rose petals instead of water. You will recall a couple of years ago that thousands of infant baptisms performed by a Catholic priest in Arizona were ruled invalid because the priest changed the formula of baptism as Jesus had given it to his apostles. The means of grace, the word and sacraments must be delivered to God's people just as they were delivered by Christ himself. The sending of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost assured the apostles of God's continued divine presence among them as they carried on the kingdom of God work that Jesus had begun and entrusted to them. And this is the purpose of the Holy Christian Church today, to continue ministering to all of the inhabitants of this world as the Holy Spirit continues to lead and guide Christ's church on earth, so that all people who the Holy Spirit calls to saving faith will, God willing, respond and be baptized into the faith and be eternally saved. It is interesting for us to consider the, the, cup, the first two major appearances of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. First, there was God sending the angel Gabriel to Mary. The angel said, You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. There was certainly nothing uncertain in Mary's mind, having received the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, which resulted 
in her miraculous pregnancy. And then there was the baptism of Jesus by his cousin John. When Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on Jesus. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. There was no doubt in John's mind that the Spirit had descended upon Jesus and that Jesus was the Father's beloved Son. Fast forward then to the events of the day of Pentecost, and there is no uncertainty that the sending of the Holy Spirit was the fulfillment of John the Baptist's prophecy when he said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. When infants, children, and adults of all ages are today received into the community of Christ, holy body, the church, through the sacrament of holy baptism, there is certainty that this prophecy of John the Baptist continues to be fulfilled among us today. For it is the work of Christ through his word that creates saving faith in the heart of every person who is saved, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. In the gospel reading for today, Judas, having already departed, we hear Jesus promise to send his apostles again, the church, the Holy Spirit, to be a helper. He defines this helper as coming from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father and who will bear witness about Jesus. Jesus further observed of the apostles, because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. The distinct third person of the Holy Trinity, who was received by the church on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and who, as we just confessed, is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. The Holy Spirit of God is still with us today. And he continues to lead and to guide all, all God's people into his truth. Yes, Pentecost is wonderful because we celebrate the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to send the Spirit the Spirit who is our helper, because we cannot do anything by our own strength and power. The Spirit who is our comforter, who consoles us during our times of suffering. The Spirit who supplies us with words we need to express in our prayers when we cannot find them ourselves because we've sunk so low. The Spirit who guides the church and all who believe in the one saving truth, who gives faith so that we can cry out to God and call him Abba, Father, the Spirit who looses our tongue so that we can confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. Let us delight this day in the gift of the Holy Spirit, and let us not neglect to pray daily that the Holy Spirit would enter us and lead us and guide us in all our ways to pursue the path of holy living so that our godless loved ones and neighbors whose hearts are still cold with the darkness of unbelief will be warmed by the love of Christ burning in us and will use his light through us to guide them on their path to encounter for themselves the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. In the holy name of Jesus.